Hey bag ladies and bag dudes. Today I'm going to be talking about the Bohem needle puller. I've been making a bunch of bags in the last week or so, so I'll have those to show you. I've also added assorted fabrics to my stash, so not from a particular fabric line, but just uh, bits and pieces here and there that I've added. I'll be reviewing the book called Modern Memory Quilts, as well as the quilt pattern booklet Zootropolis. We'll also be showing a trailer video that we've prepared showing the projects in the brand new four pack video bundle and we'll be giving away a bunch of prizes at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, uh, my twice so a month sewing chat. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to be back for Social Sunday. I saw all of you chatting in the comments on Facebook and especially on YouTube before we got started. So uh, it seems like YouTube is the, the hangout for everyone chatting before the chat. I see Connie's watching, uh, Susan Parker, thanks so much for joining us, Mary Jo. Um, I'm so happy that you're all here and uh, very excited. I've got um, my Notion and my book reviews, all the things that I love to talk about during Social Sunday, and I've been looking forward to the show all day. Um, just uh, a bit of non-sewing chatter before we get started with the Notion of the week. Uh, I'm extremely excited. I'm entering my first uh, legitimate horse show next month, so that's gonna be on September 20th, uh, just outside the Chicago area. For the new horse show, uh, I had to buy new riding boots, um, proper boots, tall boots. They basically come up to uh, the middle of my kneecap and I thought it would be no big deal wearing these boots. Um, actually, I pulled one out just so I could show you what they look like. So they're tall boots, a little dusty over here. Um, it was hilarious trying these on in the store because I was kind of walking what I would imagine a Barbie doll would look like walking around with like stiff joints. Like that's how I was walking in the store and I and I was thinking to myself when I tried the boots on, how am I supposed to ride in these boots? So I've been trying my best to break them in the last four weeks. So I wear them around the house for a few hours. Um, I got a bunch of blisters after the first day because I, I don't know what I, th I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought it would be fine. So I got these really awesome ankle gel sleeves. So they look like ankle wraps, but there's gel on the inside, so there's no fabric. The gel protects uh, your ankle, and in my case, my heel, because I pull it down to cover my heel. It protects from rubbing against the boot. So these have been absolutely fantastic, and they feel really great walking around the house with them on too. So I wear these whenever I ride. I'm sure they're good for other things as well, or if you're breaking in just a regular pair of boots, not riding boots. Um, but it's been quite an experience. Uh, it's almost like relearning to ride in a way because I can't ride the way I used to, I sort of feel like, just because the boots uh, are a major hindrance. So anyway, looking forward to the horse show coming up next month. And uh, before I get started with the notion of the week, a friendly reminder, as always, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check my link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. This is a notion that I've wanted to talk about since the beginning of the year, and then I had my little anxiety break, and so I sat on the notion for a while. Uh, this is what it looks like in the package. It's called the Bohin Needle Puller, and it's fantastic, especially for hand sewing or if you're doing hand sewing on any of your bag projects. So let me jump over to the side camera, show you what it looks like and how it works. Okay, so again, here's the package close up just so that you can see what it looks like. It basically, this is the tool that's in the package. There's a little bit of a graphic included with how to use it, but uh, I feel like it's a really fun multi-purpose tool. It really serves three different purposes and uh, for hand sewing. So rather than prepare extra fabric, I just pulled out one of my straps because the the way that this notion shines is hand sewing through thick layers of fabric. So my straps are generally several, several layers of fabric. This is four layers of fabric and four of interfacing. It can certainly handle thicker layers than that. Um, but let me show you how it works. So 
One of the first functions is um, a sort of like a simulated thimble. So you can wear this on your hand however you prefer. You can twist it around. If you're left-handed, you can wear it on the other hand. And I feel it, it's really light and it's comfortable to wear. And there's two different spots on the tool that serve as the thimble. So they're clearly designated by this uh, textured piece of plastic and also on the bottom as well. So you can use either or for your thimble depending on how you're holding it in your hand and what feels better to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I've got my needle already threaded with some thread and I'm just gonna go and push it through the fabric. So generally the purpose, one of the purposes of a thimble is to help you push the needle through thick layers of fabric when it feels like with your hands you just can't get it to go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and orient that uh, against the back of the needle. The reason that it's textured is so it can kind of grab onto the needle so the needle's not sliding around. And let me pull that out one more time. And you can also use um, this bottom area over here as well if that's more comfortable to you. So that's the first purpose of the tool, pushing the, the needle through your thread layers or batting if you're hand quilting your batting. Um, right over here, this there's a button on the top with a metal portion that kind of closes this will help you pull your needle through the fabric. So again, working with thick layers, sometimes it's hard to get it through. All you do is push the button down after you've got the needle inside the opening and it will help you pull the needle through. So you don't have to use your fingers, the tool does that work for you. So um, one more function of the tool, let me just get my needle embedded first, is there's um, a little area for uh, cutting your thread. So that's right here, there's a little blade the opening is very small, so there's no possible way that you can cut your finger on the blade right there. Um, but if you're doing some hand sewing, you need to change threads um, or anything like that, you just go ahead and bring it in. I noticed that you don't wanna bring the thread all the way into the, the arm. You wanna just bring it directly on top of the blade, and as you can see, it cut my thread right there. So simple little tool, very lightweight, uh, easy to have in your hand sewing uh, pouch or, or what have you, and again, this is called the the Bohe needle threader and that's what it looks like in the package and I've seen different coloration versions of this tool but serves the same purpose purpose and I've been waiting to talk about this because it's very handy I do a lot of uh, hand sewing when I do English paper piecing and even though I'm just working with fabric and uh, my templates sometimes because I'm using glue sometimes certain areas get a uh, a little bit difficult for the needle to go through and this is really handy for that not only for the thimble portion but for pulling that needle through uh, my template and my fabric for English paper piecing. Um, I've been sewing a lot of bags in the last week normally I do more work on the computer than I do actually at the sewing machine uh, but I just wanted to pull out my very favorite one that I that I made in the last week and I'll show you the rest later but let me move my boot out of the way. Uh, this is one of the new videos. Uh, this is the Coalition bag, the duffel size version. I so love making this bag. I, 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 I would not consider myself a, a very fast sewer. I feel like I'm average as far as speed goes. I have a lot of friends that sew much, much faster than I do, but not counting cutting and fusing, this duffel took me four hours of sewing time, so I was really excited. Of course, we're always running up against a deadline anytime we release new videos, but um, I had to finish this fast, and with four hours, I was quite pleased with uh, my sewing time on this particular duffel. I wanted to show you, my daughter Violet is a really big Disney Stitch fan, and I have, I don't remember where I got this fabric panel, but I wanted to make her the duffel in this particular fabric, so I wanted to show you the fabric that I had in mind. So let me, Danny, can you see that pretty good? Uh, so their stitch, I think my fabric panel is a big enough piece to make the duffel and I have two of these so I can have stitch on the front and the back. So really excited to make my daughter a duffel. I showed this duffel on Instagram and I, on Facebook the other day and people were asking where I purchased this uh, Greyhound floral fabric. So this is from Spoonflower. I used their new um, or newish petal cotton. Um, previously, I was purchasing fabric from Spoonflower on their Kona. If you're not familiar with Spoonflower, Spoonflower is uh, a print-on-demand website. So you can either upload your own designs to Spoonflower and have those designs printed onto fabric or other things like wallpaper, um, garment fabric, all sorts of different things. Um, or you can purchase an already designed piece. So I went on Spoonflower 
Um, actually, they have uh, design challenges every month. So they had a design challenge uh, having to do with fabrics with animals on them. And so this was one of the, either the finalists or the winner. And I really loved this fabric. So I thought it would be great for the duffel. Uh, the only thing, um, I just have to give you a notice about that. By the way, I've linked to this fabric in the description. However, because of the way the repeat is set up and I wanted, I knew I wanted to have the dog centered on the duffel. I, I know it sounds a lot, but I did have to purchase four yards of fabric uh, to get this done. Um, you'd certainly need to uh, purchase less if you just wanted the Greyhound on the front, but I wanted it on the front and the back centered. So um, picky, I know, but um, anyway, that's uh, my favorite bag that I've sewn in the, in the past week. And I'll show you some more of the rest of the bags uh, a little bit later on in the show. So Danny's favorite, portion of the Sunday show. Let us know. I want all my bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud. Let me know. I know I'm certainly a huge bag lady and I really appreciate the bag making community. I love seeing all the bag lady and bag dude comments come through and I feel like our community, the Soul Sweetness community is second to none. Like I really never see negative comments come through either on the shows or in the Facebook group. Everyone's always been helpful uh, to answer other people's questions or when people post photos of their finished bags in the Facebook group. Um, everyone always has nice things to say about that. So um, thank you for being part of our community. I see Kyla says, can we see the inside of the duffel? Yes, stay tuned a little bit later on in the show. We prepared a short few minute video showing all four projects in the four pack video bundle that was just released. So I open up all the projects, show you all the pockets and the inners. Uh, everyone always wants to see what's in the lining, like what kinds of pockets and things. So I'll be showing that a little bit later on in the show. So stay tuned. So the new fabric that I've added to my stash recently, um, just a few bits and pieces. I wanted to share those with you. And um, of course, one of them is sort of horse related. So let me jump over to the side camera and show you those new fabrics that I added to my stash. Okay, so the first one, let's start with the, the horses or rather the unicorns. So this is a fabric line called Magical Rainbow Unicorns put out by the fabric manufacturer Robert Kaufman. And I just love the dancing unicorns. This particular print comes in also a turquoise and a pink background. I thought this was super cute. Coordinating fabric I picked up for a lining, which is the stripe fabric, which I really like. and. It also comes with this great panel print. So let me open up the panel print so that you can see. The panel print basically has squares of different illustrations and I thought these would be cool for either pillows or, and let me show you all the rest of the designs too. I thought these would be fantastic for either pillows, the front of the bag, um, especially for a child. That's hilarious right here with the narwhal. Um, I also thought it would be cool because it's almost the right size. I thought it would be cool for the window portion of the Minikin's I Spy pouch. So this is the large size. Uh, the panel pretty much almost all fits on there. So most of the artwork would be in the window, either that or on the back of the pouch. So I thought this fabric, these fabrics were totally cute. And I have a couple others that are not horse related. Um, this one's called Cityscape. So it's a black background with uh, different buildings from New York. So I thought this would be great for a bag as well. And I purchased this last one with my son in mind. So <laughs> this fabric line is called Bite Me. I know a lot of people are fans of uh, Shark Week over on TV. And so, I don't know, this fabric just kind of made me smile. So I purchased this a couple yards. Maybe I'll make another duffel for William. Um, but anyway, those are the new fabrics that I've added to my stash this week. So for those particular fabrics, I don't have uh, an actual project in mind for what I'll make with them. Um, so I have this, I'm gonna pose you this question and I'll answer it as well. What, spi what size fabric do you usually buy either online or from your local quilt shop if you don't have a particular project in mind? So would you buy maybe a fat quarter, two yards? I've seen people in the past say two or three yards. Uh, those particular fabrics, I purchased one yard except for uh, the shark print because I thought I might make a duffel with it, so I, I bought two yards. Um, let me know. I know people tend to hoard different sizes of fabric, so I'm just curious to know uh, what size you would buy if you didn't have a particular project in mind. So um, I'm sure a lot of you are aware we went on vacation, not this past week, the, the week before. So 
I have a couple of photos that I wanted to show you just to talk about it very briefly. We went to Tennessee and stayed in the Smoky Mountains. Um, Danny's going to put, Danny, are you putting the pictures on the screen first? Okay. So this is a dinner show we went to. If you're familiar with the dinner show Medieval Times, this is similar to that. It's called Dolly Parton Stampede and it was all horses. So that was a cool show. Here's a picture that I took uh, at sunset one time. We went up in the mountains to a friend's house. Uh, so beautiful views all around with lots of mountains in the area. We went on a really cool cave tour. Uh, it was an hour long. We went in the caves and it was really interesting seeing all the different formations in the caves. Here's another picture from the cave and also um, decades ago people were when it when it was outlawed people were making moonshine down in the cave so we saw the moonshine barrels down there it was really cool we went up in the mountains up kind of like a ski lift so it was really high up and cool and this is from um, bridges that were connecting the different trees so uh, I think it was 14 maybe 14 different bridges it was really high up and it was kind of scary I don't, I would never consider myself to be scared of heights, but doing certain things, everything was high up and in the mountains, uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking. Um, and oh, here's a video. We went to indoor sledding, which I had no idea it was a thing, but I guess in Tennessee when they don't really get snow like we do in Chicago, there's Violet. <laughs> there's Violet and Danny going down the sledding hill. So there were tons of fun things to do there. Um, every day we had, you know, two or three fun things that we had planned to do and we had a great time on vacation. So that was our vacation. Um, another thing that I wanted to tell you about is our very last book club discussion for 2019 is coming up this Tuesday. That's August 20th at 7 p.m. Central Time on both Facebook and YouTube. We'll be discussing the sixth book called Margaret Goes Modern, and I'm very excited, but the author of Margaret Goes Modern will be joining me for the live show on Tuesday. Um, her name is Frances Dowell. She's a quilter. She's written lots of books, won lots of awards. She's been doing fantastic things throughout her life with her writing, so I'm very excited to talk to her during the live show. So stay tuned for that. If you have not read Margaret Goes Modern yet, but you would like to participate in the show, you can certainly watch even if you haven't read the book, but I would like to encourage you to read the book. It's a collection of short stories, uh, all quilt related. And uh, I believe I finished my copy of the book in like an hour and a half. So it's a really quick read. If you have a little bit of time later this evening or over the next two days before that live show, I encourage you to read the book. Um, again, we're gonna have the author live and my friend Tamara and I will be discussing that book club selection on the show and I'll also be debuting the sixth or sorry the fifth free project and video on the show so I'm really excited lots to get through on that show and I'm really looking forward to Tuesday night so all right without further ado let me get over to the book review for this week the book is called Modern Memory Quilts I thought it was a fantastic book so I'm going to jump over to the side camera and show you what that's about Okay, so some of you might be familiar with memory quilts. Memory quilts are usually made from clothing, old t-shirts, jerseys, baby clothes, that kind of thing. So this is a book that recently came out and I've always been interested in the concept of making memory quilts. When my kids were little, I saved all their clothes for the first few years. Not all their clothes, but like um, nice outfits or things that sparked memories with me. So um, that's kind of inspired me to go pick this book up. So um, a couple passages that I wanted to read about um, memory keeping. So this is directly from the book. When working on a personal project, I look at photos, journal entries, and other physical keepsakes to remember and look for recurring patterns in the details. Listening to music or someone's voice or experiencing the feel and smell of their clothing can also be powerful reminders. So I thought that was a really nice passage in there. And um, the author also talks about photographing the clothing before you start cutting, cutting it up. She says, it's never a bad idea to photograph clothing before you cut it up, especially the outfit your kid wore home from the hospital or your wedding dress or your mother's favorite shirt. Preserving meaningful clothing through photos is a great way to hold on to the memories without taking up closet space. So I thought that was really interesting. And she shows in the book um, how she cuts up clothing. She says, when I cut up a piece of clothing to prepare it for stabilizing, I generally cut along the seams as close as possible with a pair of fabric shears. For a shirt or a onesie, I cut uh, both sides up the side seams and through the underarm or an inside arm. And then she cuts the shirt into smaller or flatter pieces if necessary. So 
you always want to leave the pieces as large as possible so that you have obviously more fabric to work with so the really special thing about this book is that of course there's quilt patterns and project patterns but there's a story before each project um, a personal story of someone's actual memory quilt uh, what the memory was, what kind of clothing they used for it. So I really enjoyed not only the projects, but reading the personal stories as well. And so this is Tasha and Isaiah's quilt and the instructions for making the project are in the quilt, but here's, here's this particular quilt and I thought that was so cute. I'm not sure if that was part of a onesie, but like that's a three-dimensional little rabbit on there. Um, parts of t-shirts that you can see, some overalls. So I mean, super adorable, and just seeing it there, something visually to look at, I thought was really awesome. Um, the next quilt projects in the book are twin quilts, and uh, obviously these are uh, twins, so they each have a version of the quilt. Um, again, the instructions for all these projects are here, but here's the two twin quilts, and they're, they're really adorable. I love the intersecting lines of fabric, the animal appliques. So uh, what could be better than this uh, as far as having a keepsake that you can look at for years to come? All right, here's another of the projects. These are hexagons. I love hexes. I love all the different fabrics represented and they're sort of kind of a nautical theme represented by the clothing. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, a wedding quilt. Wedding quilts are also great keepsakes and here, here's their wedding quilt. So that's really cool. You can see the, the particular t-shirts right here combined with uh, cotton solids. And quilts can also be used to remember someone who's, who's no longer with you. So um, here's a, a smaller quilt that's hung on a wall with the initial. So really lots of different ideas. I'll show you some of the rest of the projects in the book. So again, really nice stories, really nice reasons to make these types of quilts. And um, this is really cool. So these are pillows made from her grandmother's fur coat. So you can see the strips of the fur interspersed with the, the quilting cotton. So the dark piece, that's the strip of the fur coat. I thought this was awesome. All of the pillows look different, but they all have the little strip of the fur coat. And these are really modern looking and great. I could see using these in my house. There's the stack of the pillows right here. So awesome, what an awesome idea. This is my favorite project in the, in the book. It doesn't even look like a memory quilt, but I can see the little strips of fabric over here. So great idea. There's a couple more projects in the book. All of the instructions are represented by illustrations and there's any of the templates are included in the back for you to either photocopy or cut out directly. So again, this was called Modern Memory Quilts. I thought it was uh, really well put together. The projects were interesting and I loved the stories. And I have one more to show you. This is actually a quilt pattern booklet. It's from Sassafras Lane Designs and it's called Zootropolis. So it's all applique. As you can see, all of these animals are represented. So the instructions in the book are minimal being that it is applique, mostly just templates are represented. But this is another great idea. Once I opened up the cover, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So all of the quilt blocks are also turned into pillows and there's instructions in the book for either the quilt project or the pillows. So. Um, very 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 cute would be great for baby shower gifts um, here's the instructions for the pillow and the quilt and as you can see throughout the book are the templates for uh, the applique so again let's see if there's yeah um, there's another cute picture of those pillows on the back so um, again this is called zootropolis from sassafras lane designs and i've linked to both that Modern Memory Quilts book and the Zootropolis Quilt Pattern booklet in the description in case you're interested in finding, a finding out more about either of those publications. So I have another question for you. I'm curious, have you ever made a project out of clothing or keepsakes before? So let me know. My friend Kim often makes quilts with clothing and I think it's really a nice memory to have because someone's clothing has its own particular smell and seeing and feeling it, being able to feel it in a quilt, especially when you go to bed at night, I think it's a wonderful idea for a great keepsake. So um, Danny and I prepared the other day a trailer video showing you all of the projects in our latest four pack video bundle. So showing you all the special details in each project, the lining pockets, all of that stuff. So uh, Danny's gonna play that video for you now and hope you enjoy. 
Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I am so very excited to introduce you to the four projects that are in my latest four pack video bundle. If you're not familiar with the four pack video bundle, it's four brand new videos and four corresponding PDF patterns to go along with the videos and it's a great variety of projects. I have in this particular bundle travel bags, small everyday bags and I even have a pouch so let me introduce you to the four projects that are in the four pack video bundle it's only available for a limited time so in this case only until September 2nd and then the bundle goes away forever so the first project in the bundle is one of my favorite bags to sew and that's the coalition bag it comes in two different sizes handbag size and also the duffel size I absolutely love the duffel size and if you'll notice in my two versions that I have here, in this one I used quilting cotton for the purse tabs and the straps, and in the duffel size I used cork fabric. So it's a great opportunity to try your hand at using different substrates, and I discuss both of these substrates in the video. The Coalition bag features accents on the front of the bag, as well as stylized purse tabs to attach to your hardware and straps. I demonstrate using several different materials in the video, such as cork, quilting cotton, vinyl, or leather, so lots of options as far as stylizing your bag with the accents. The great thing about this particular bag is that the top zip closure continues throughout the side panels, so the bag does open wide. There's some great side pockets with faux piping, which is a really unique look and it's really easy to do. And those same pockets are on the lining side of the bag as well. So there's two lining pockets on either end. And I use a false bottom to stabilize this bag. So my false bottom, I used corrugated plastic and especially in the duffel size, this false bottom is really handy because that duffel really holds a lot of clothes and a lot of extra weight inside. So a really unique bag, it comes together with just the front and the back fabrics and everything sort of comes together via sewing origami, if you will. The Sloan Travel Bag is the second project in the four pack video bundle and this is one of the largest bags that I have in my bag making arsenal. It features tons of different styles of pockets and there's even a key strap in the lining of the bag which makes it really quick and easy to grab your keys. The Sloan Travel Bag is huge. It features this front zippered pocket. It has a three-dimensional look to it. And there's also side pockets that secure with a pearl snap. So there's a side pocket on either end of the exterior, and there's also the same side pockets minus the flap in the lining. So one on either side. There are two zippered pockets in the lining as well, and these are large zippered pockets, so can fit quite a lot inside. And another great thing about the lining is there is a D-ring attached to the bag with a removable, removable swivel clip that you can attach to your keys. So this is really handy, especially with such a large bag. You can clip this to your keys, and when you need to find your keys really quickly, just feel for that key strap, and you'll have the keys. There's a recessed zipper at the top of the bag, and I've used this particular bag many times for carry-on travel. It fits underneath the seat in front of me, and I like it because it really does fit a lot inside. The Polaris bag is the next project in the four-pack video bundle, and it features two different styles of bags. There's the square version and the oval version. I made this version using Harris Tweed, which I feel like gives the bag a little bit of extra class. And for my oval version, I made it using a quilting cotton. And I'll also show you in the video how to make an attached piping to the bag, which I feel gives the bag an extra bit of unique flair. The Polaris bag is a really cute and fun bag that comes in these two different styles. And it's a great opportunity to try your hand at making and attaching piping. It's really fun and easy. The strap is attached to either side of the bag using purse hardware. And there's a top zip closure. So this is a drop-in lining, the assembly of this bag. I'll show you how to do that with the help of Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. Again, really easy to accomplish, and there's a zipper pocket in the lining. The Paladin Pouch is the fourth and final project in the four-pack video bundle. It comes in three different sizes, small, medium, and large, 
And the unique thing about this pouch is it features a single top zip closure. And on the lining of the pouch, there's three separate compartments as well as an optional zipper pocket. So you'll be amazed at how quickly and easily this comes together. And it really is a fantastic, unique look. Okay, so this is what the Paladin pouch looks like from the outside. There are these two separate compartments. And then when you unzip it, it actually has three compartments in the lining. So this center compartment in the size large is perfect for slipping your cell phone into. And here's the optional zipper pocket as well on one end. The optional zipper pocket is for the large or the medium sizes. And it just really comes together quickly. It's kind of addictive like candy, how fast these come together and they make great gifts. I hope you enjoyed that in-depth look at the projects in my latest four pack video bundle. I'm always really excited about debuting new videos, especially the video for the newest project, the Paladin Pouch. Don't forget the bundle is only available until September 2nd, so grab your bundle and come sew along with me. All right, I hope you enjoyed that trailer video and the close-up look at all of the projects, and I just wanted to say um, thank you all so much uh, for watching the shows, participating in the Facebook group. Um, I've been designing patterns for seven years. My husband Danny has been working with me for two and a half years now once we started doing the videos. And um, basically, thank you for letting me live my dream. I love designing sewing patterns. I love putting these videos together for you. And uh, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do that. So thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you. So I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type that in the comments right now, either on Facebook or YouTube. Danny's going to be putting some questions on the screen in just a minute. I see Bronwyn says, uh, so addictive to make the paladins. I made five and forced myself to stop. They are, I have to admit, once you get the hang of the pattern, it's a uh, a relatively short pattern compared to some of my other patterns but once you get the hang of how everything comes together so once you make one or two of the paladin pouches um, they come together like that like candy i could really see them being made especially assembly line really quickly um but anyway ask me your questions i also want to know what the things for your uh, boots were to protect your ankles um question. oh danny's danny's letting me know that there were a bunch of questions about my uh my gel sleeve. So if you go on Amazon and just search ankle gel sleeve, uh, these will come up. So you want, I saw like gel dots. Um, I didn't try those, but you want the gel sleeve. And I noticed that a lot of people are using these for skateboarding or ice skating to protect their ankles as well. So very, very handy. Um, once, hang on one second, I'll come to your question in a minute. I just wanted to announce the winner of last show's giveaway. Um, so the winner of that giveaway is Kim Dorval. So congratulations to you, Kim. Um, I'll leave a comment for you on your original comments uh, that you had for your entry on YouTube and just let me know your mailing address so, so we can get your prize out. So again, congratulations. Okay, let's get over to the questions. Um, how much is the bundle? So the bundle is $40. You get the four brand new videos the four PDF patterns to go along with the videos. So if you break that down, that's uh, $10 for um, four videos and for each video and PDF pattern. Uh, what else was I gonna say about that? If, because some of the patterns in the bundle are previous, previously released patterns, if you say, for example, already own the Polaris bag, but you still wanna buy the bundle because you want all the videos, uh, we will be substituting for another PDF pattern of your choice. So all you have to do after you purchase the bundle is just drop me an email. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com, sarah with no H. Uh, let me know that you purchased the bundle. Let me know what your um, substitution choice will be. And I will add that substitution choice to your account on my website. So um, I don't want anyone to have duplicate patterns. So that's why we're offering the substitutions over there. Um, is there a functional benefit to the overhanging zipper or is it simply aesthetic? So that's a really great question. I have a few patterns, uh, maybe three patterns or so with an overhanging zipper like this. So this oh, is... Yes, let's you open it larger. Yes, Danny, you're exactly right. Uh, Danny's watched a few of my videos, I suppose. <laughs> so the, the main benefit of having this zipper tail is that when you're top stitching your opening, you can have this opened wide. So without having the, the overhang of the zipper, um, your end of your zipper will be here and 
force you to have the fabrics uh, kind of in close quarters, so it's more difficult to top stitch. Uh, the only way around that would be to have a separating zipper, but I don't often use separating zippers in my bag. So this is not only nice to grab so that you can zip it and unzip it, you have something to grab, but it also serves the function of making top stitching oh so much easier because you can just leave your fabric spread apart. Laurel says, what was the name of the unicorn fabrics again? Um, the unicorn fabric line was called Magical Rainbow Unicorns, and I linked to that in the description. Um, I linked to it on Etsy, so uh, there's various sellers that are selling that, so you have a better chance of scooping one up before they sell out. Marie says, what type of thread do you recommend for purse making, including weight of thread? So um, I like using 100% cotton. Polyester is certainly fine as well. I use, personally, Aurifil 40 weight thread. Um, I've used 50 weight in a pinch, um, but the way the thread numbers work is kind of reverse. So the 40 weight thread is thicker than the 50 weight. Um, there's lots of different colors available. The threads that I have behind me on my setup are all Aurifil. Peg says, is it just the four pack videos that won't be available after September or the actual patterns too? So that's a great question. So um, the actual bundle is the only thing that's available for a limited time. We currently sell the patterns and the videos separately. So if you're only interested in say the Paladin pouch, um, maybe you only want the PDF pattern, or you maybe you just want the PDF pattern in the video for just that one project. You can buy those separately now. After the bundle goes away on September 2nd, uh, those patterns and videos will still be available. So just to make that clear, um, the only special here is the bundled, uh, the bundle of the four videos and the four PDF patterns. Suzanne says, can you add a wrist strap to the Paladin pouch? If so, where would you put it? So that's another great question. Um, I believe at least a few of my testers put uh, a little tab over here on one end um, with a removable wrist strap. And I do have a free video on my YouTube channel. I know I talked about during Social Sunday, I demonstrated how to add a little wrist strap to any project. So um, I should either have that as a separate video or you can just go ahead and do a search in my YouTube channel for how to add a wrist strap to any bag. Nancy says, when will you have the purse frames available? Um, I apologize. The um, response to the Suffolk coin purse, which is a free video and project, which requires the use of the purse frames, the response was way more than I expected. So currently we only have the small purse frames in stock. I do, I did place a very large order for the large size purse frames. Uh, we're expecting those in a few weeks. I, I know that's a really long time from now, but um, we'll be getting those in and I'll let you know on the live shows and on social media as soon as we have those in. Speaking of purse hardware, I've been uh, doing some investigating and uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, insider knowledge or sneak peek, um, a couple weeks ago, actually before vacation, I ordered samples of purse hardware in different finishes, so like rainbow finishes, different types of things like strap anchors, and so uh, it's really important getting samples just to check the quality of products and how they look and how the finishes look, so um, hopefully before the uh, maybe the end of September, fingers crossed, we'll have purse hardware in the shop. We'll also be carrying uh, zippers by the yard in different finishes and colors. So really excited to expand the product range. Danny, not so excited because our basement is already full to the brim with bag making supplies, but I'm especially excited for the purse hardware and I really love uh, the rainbow finishes in particular. Deborah says, will the patterns in the new bundle be available separately in the future? They're actually available separately right now. So you can go ahead and uh, go to my pattern shop. And if you're only interested in one of the projects, you can find that in the shop available now. Beth says, if I buy the four pack, will the videos be available after September? Um, great question about the videos. Any videos that you purchase from my website are, uh, first of all, they're stored in your account on my website. So you always have access to them. So that means um, if you're at home, you can watch the videos. If you're at someone else's house and you want to log into your account on their computer and watch the videos, you can do that. You can watch the videos an unlimited number of times. You can watch each video a thousand times if you wish, and you can watch them forever. So five years from now, 10 years from now, those videos will always be available to you. So um, they're not a limited, uh, limited time thing. You'll always have them. You can make the project this year, you can make it again next year, watch the video again. That's the great thing about the videos. Um, I put the small crimson and clover case I made in our local fair and I got a second place. I don't know how to post pictures on social media or I would show it. First of all, big congratulations. Um, second place, that's a very high honor. 
If you're a member of our Facebook group, which I've linked to in the description, you can go ahead and post a photo of your train case with your prize ribbon on it in the group. I'm sure everyone would love to see it and congratulations congratulate you over in the group. Again, big congratulations to you on that win. Uh, Rosemary says, hi Sarah, what should the two ends of the zipper look like on the cotton candy bag when it is veered off? So that's a great question and we actually have a free video on the YouTube channel about veering the zipper off the end of the fabric. Um, over the last few years I had a lot of questions about veering the zipper and so we made a separate video just discussing it more in depth. So after the show, if you want to check that out again, that's on the YouTube channel and you just want to do a search on my channel, veering the zipper off the edge of the fabric. Robin says, your patterns have made me reach beyond my comfort level and you are right, I can do it. It sometimes takes a few tries on some patterns, uh, but you do finally get it. So thank you for that feedback. Um, that's one of the reasons why I, I never started designating my patterns. Uh, this one's intermediate level, this one's advanced level, because I feel like, especially with the videos, it's within reach to everyone. All you have to do is take one section at a time, even if you're just working on, uh, you know, one section a day, one small section of the video and pattern a day. You can, you'll get to the end, I promise you, you will. Um, I'm always reachable by, via email to help. The Facebook group has great members that are always available to help, and we wanna see you succeed, and it's really true. If I can do it, so can you. Pat says, Sarah, any new templates in the works? Um, the Oslo bag, uh, what new templates do we have in the works? Um, Ed and Robin, who, are make, who, who make our templates, are still uh, busily, we're always needing to restock our templates, so there's, they're still trying to get us restocked on a few things we're out of. Um, I definitely need to come out with some new templates, especially I had requests for some of the free projects that we put out for book club, so I'd like to investigate having acrylic templates for a few of those. So um, again, I'll let you know on social media and on the shows as soon as we have some new ones in stock. Cheryl says, will you ever carry the thread in a cone? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I guess I'll need to investigate that. I'll write myself, myself a note so I can uh, look into that. Um, Deborah says, uh, can you carry the Beacon 3-in-1 glue? I'll, I'll look into that as well. That's the kind of glue that I use for purse frames, um, gluing different portions of the bag. I've, I've got it right here, so let me show you what it looks like. Uh, this is the Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Um, I use it for lots of different bag making applications. And the reason I like this glue is because it's not runny like some of the other glues that I've tried. It's a little bit thicker, which means it's not dripping down the front of your project while you're trying to glue a purse frame in or, or things like that. So very great glue, I love it. Pat says, will you have buckles in your shop? Uh, we will have buckles. I did get some samples for buckles in I think two different sizes, one inch and one and a half inch because I did use buckles on uh, the Kennedy bag, which is, I've got it right here actually, surprisingly. So the, the Kennedy bag has the buckles on the front and the smaller buckles on the side. So uh, yes, we should be getting some of those in again in all of the different finishes. Susan says, is it possible to get acrylic templates for your hobo bag, the free hobo pattern in your shop? Um, I think that should be doable. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think so. Let me write that down. I always have to think carefully about acrylic templates because uh, in the instance of the Clyde Bank tote, which is a free video and pattern, that tote is the body of the bag connected to the strap and the strap is a skinny piece. And for sure we can't have an acrylic template for that. First of all, it's a really huge piece. And second of all, I'm very nervous about that strap. I can envision it getting broken off very easily, either in shipping or um, if you're just carefully using it in your storing room, just because it's such a skinny piece. But the hobo bag, I think, should be manageable. So I'll write myself a note to check that out. Thank you for the suggestion. Mary Jo says, I really want to try zippers by the yard, but how hard to learn to use? Super simple. You just need a, a fork, which most people have. I did a video on my YouTube channel, and you can search for that, um, zippers by the yard. Uh, it's just a short video. I demonstrate how to get the zipper head on uh, the zipper tape. Um, super easy with the help of the zipper. So you can do it all by yourself. You don't need another person to help you get it on there. Gloria says, hi Sarah, which bag, the airplane bag or the Sloan bag is best to do first as a carry-on? So um, the airplane bag is much quicker. It's got, uh, basically it's just uh, the front fabric and the back fabric and it's made three-dimensional by the use of gussets. Uh, the Sloan travel bag has a lot of extra features, which uh, are very nice, but it takes a little bit longer to sew that particular project with the, the front pocket and the, the side pockets with the flaps. So the airplane bag is definitely 
a quicker sew. I have used both of those bags as uh, carry-ons on an airplane and they both will fit underneath the seat in front of you. Granted, you might need to not smoosh them, but um, they definitely fit. I've used them many times on the airplane. Tina says, I had numerous people ask me if the bag I made was a Vera Bradley bag. They are so impressed when they find out I made it. Thank you for great patterns. Um, thank you for the feedback. Uh, I'm sure your bag looked way better than a Vera Bradley bag. Um, They're very cute, but um, I know we can do better. Um, but anyway, thank you for the feedback about that. And I'm so happy that everyone was impressed uh, by your bag making skills. Tammy says, Rockstar bag video and templates, please. Uh, the Rockstar bag is on my list for, um, we're not going to be doing any more four pack video bundles this year, but uh, we'll get to that at the beginning of next year. I have, I'd like to write four new patterns uh, before the end of this year and videos and I, I don't want to re reveal too much about it, but uh, they're going to be bags that can be used by both men and women. So really excited about those particular patterns that are uh, coming much later in the year though. <laughs> Crystal says, do you have templates for the park sling bag? Uh, we do. We have a template set for the small park sling and also a template set for the large park sling. We sell those separately. They do have a lot of pieces, so um, they're, uh, I don't know, not, not, I guess, inexpensive just because of the size and the amount of the pieces, but you can find those on my website, sosweetness.com. Uh, we have a shop tab with a subheading for acrylic templates and it'll be there. Mirta says, have you gotten far on your embroidery machine? No, <laughs> we need to move. There's really no room in this house to have extra machines for me at least. So uh, we really do need to move uh, to a bigger house first <laughs> before I have room to have all the machines set up, unfortunately. Reg says, what is the name of the bag behind you? Green flowers with a short handle, please. Um, I think maybe this one green handle. I think this is, this is from Minikin season two. It's the gloss cosmetic bag. And actually when we went to Tennessee, I took this exact bag along. I put all the shampoos and things inside and it feels like there's still some things in there. Yeah. There's still some, uh, like contact sol solution inside. <laughs> uh, I have eye cream over here. So nail clippers. So as you can see, I didn't quite empty it out, but this is great for not only sewing supplies, but, um, when you're going away on a trip. Jackie says, can you make the Sloan in a smaller size? Um, you could. Um, sometimes when people make any of my bags in a smaller size, first of all, they'll use their either their home printer scanner to reduce the size of the pattern pieces. So for a smaller bag, you might, for example, want maybe 80% or you can take it to a copy shop and they can help you as well. You'll also want to either reduce or enlarge the size of um, the squares and rectangles. So in my patterns, I don't have pattern pieces for squares or rectangles. You'll want to either draw those out and have those uh, reduced or enlarged as well, or you can just um, calculate them based on um, how your the rest of your finished pattern pieces turn out. That makes sense. Mary Jo says, I'm hoping for a yoga bag pattern for Christmas gifts. I did have the yoga bag pattern on my list for a long time. I wanted to do maybe like two different versions, one with a zipper and one where you just slide it inside. Uh, I'm not sure whatever happened with that. I get really distracted as a pattern writer by uh, quote unquote shiny objects. So I'll be really into an idea one day and if I don't tackle it immediately, I get distracted by another pattern idea. So um, it is still on my list. I do still wanna do yoga mat. I'm not sure when that will be coming out yet though. Brenda says, I love the blue floral fabric on your bag. Can you say where you got it? Um, I think you probably meant the Sloan travel bag. This is fabric designed by a rifle paper company for cotton and steel. So this particular print and the colorway came in two different, two different versions. So one was quilting cotton. In the quilting cotton version, the flowers were a little bit smaller. I wanted big flowers on my bag. So this is actually a rayon, um, which is mainly used for garment fabrics. And so because the rayon has a bit of extra drape, I first stabilized the rayon fabric with uh, Pellant Shape Flex just to take away the drape and make it less, not that it's super stretchy, but it kind of does, I guess, warp in different directions. So I stabilized it with the Pellant Shape Flex and then if the piece is required, say foam interfacing, then I also attach them to the foam. Um, but anyway, that's a uh, Rifle Paper Company and she's got tons of really great prints. I have a lot of Rifle Paper Company fabrics in my stash. Um, hi, Sarah. What about SVG files for small projects to cut with the Cricut, please? Um, well, so I have good news. It's not quite available yet, but um, 
I, I guess sort of. I, I just need to get on the ball, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, we have created, with the help of Suzanne, who's a viewer, um, SVG files for almost all of the Minikin Season 1 projects. So Minikin Season 1 is a collection of small accessories, zipper pouches, and different things for storing um, accessories and other items. There's just a couple of the Minikin Season 1 patterns that we could not make into SVG files, either because of the size of the templates, too big for the cutting mat, or um, there was one project, the grab and go sleeve. Uh, that one works off of your own measurements of your device that you're putting inside it. So obviously we can't have, in that case, um, SVG files for that, but all of the rest of the patterns we do. So hopefully I'll have that together later on in the week and that will not be an extra charge. Um, it will just be uh, a bonus feature, I guess, that we've added to the bundle. Marilyn says, can people buy zipper pulls for regular size three zippers and then put them on leftover zipper pieces? So yes, there actually are available out there zippers by the yard and extra zipper pulls for number three dress skirt zippers. Um, my handmade space, I believe, is where you can find them. I think I have a couple in my stash as well as the handbag zippers by the yard. Um, what was the name of the site to print your own designs on fabric? So that's spoonflower.com. Fabulous site. Um, I highly recommend. I think for $3 they sell a sample pack of all of the different substrates that they sell as well as a sample printing on each one just so you can see. Depending on the fabric substrates, the colors look slightly different. Like some of the substrates look really bright and some of them look a little muted. So they print the same design on each of the little sample swatches of fabric, which is really helpful to have. Um, I've, I've purchased it in the past and it was really great to reference um, because they sell all sorts of things like I believe they have minky fleece, um, sport fabrics, uh, quilting cotton, you name it, they've got it at Spoonflower. Sandra says, my great granddaughter rides horses too. Would it be possible to design a bag to hold riding helmets? That's a great idea. I wouldn't have even thought of that. Uh, I'll write that down, riding helmet bag. Yeah, there's so much equipment for horseback riding that you have to lug back and forth, certainly. All right, Danny's calling it on the questions. So um, let's give some stuff away. Yeah, let's give some stuff away, he says. Um, so tonight, because we're releasing the four pack video bundle, uh, by the way, the link for that's in the description. We wanted to give away not just one prize, a bunch of prizes. So we decided we wanted to make it fair to both the live viewers and those of you that watch the recording of Social Sunday later on in the week. So we're going to give away six prizes total. So we're going to do three prizes live right now and we'll do three that anyone can enter. So even if you're watching live, you can still enter um, the giveaways for those. So Danny's just going to ask me for random numbers. I'm going to just choose numbers out of my head. He's going to go over to the, the chat, which he sees on his screen and how that works is he's just going to, based on my number, draw a winner. So, um, all right, we'll start with that. Uh, let me let me post my giveaway question just so people can have some comments going through. Is that okay, Danny? Okay, so up there. oh, <laughs> thanks, Danny. Um, so my giveaway question, and you can answer this live now as well as later on in the week if you're watching the recording. What is your favorite project from the four pack? So let me just quickly hold those projects up just so you know what they're called again. Uh, the Paladin pouch that was the one with the the three <laughs> portions on the inside. The Polaris bag, which came in the, the square version or the oval version. The Coalition bag, which here's the handbag size and there was also the duffel size. And then the fourth project is the Sloan travel bag. So let me know in the comments what your favorite is. Out of those, those four choices, uh, we'll give it a second just for some of the comments to start coming through. So again, we're going to choose three live winners now based on the comments that are coming through. And then I'll also choose three and I'll announce those last three winners on the show uh, in two weeks. So how our new Social Sunday schedule runs, it's we're gonna have a show on the first and the third Sunday of every month. So I was doing shows every Sunday and Tuesday and it was just, uh, admittedly, I felt like I was getting further and further behind. So hopefully this new schedule uh, we'll be able to stay on track. I'll be um, refreshed uh, when I join you for the next Social Sunday show. So again, um, I hope you'll join us on the first and the third Sunday of every month. And um, I know I didn't this time, but in the future, I'll try to send a newsletter out uh, the day of the show just to give you a little bit of 
uh, an extra heads up and we'll also let you know on the social media uh, when we have a next show coming. So, um, oh, and again, please join us this Tuesday for book club and that's 7 p.m. Central Time, Tuesday, August 20th at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, Facebook and YouTube. All right, Danny's going Is to- Is straw poll? How do you do that? It's on straw poll and I could link it and uh, they could do their favorite vote. Uh, okay. Make sure I spell it correctly. Uh, I'm not. Danny wants to try some sort of new technology. I, I have no idea. He sort of sprung this on me. I can read it. Are that they going to? Uh, you spelled coalition wrong. How are you? C O A L. So Danny, in our family, Danny is the. So let's fi focus on spelling it correctly. The math and science guy, and I'm Hello, the English writing. Hello, are we focusing on spelling or talking? Yeah, it looks. It looks. Coalition like that? Coalition. Uh, after the elders and I. <laughs> yeah, I'm the speller and the writer okay, in the family. Okay, you're not doing well at spelling, obviously. Okay. It's hard to see from here. I mean... Coalition. Coalition. I'm just going to leave it like I had it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Danny's trying to put together a survey. I'm not sure... Like I said, he pulled it out of nowhere, so I'm not sure if it's going to come up on the screen or, or what. Is this for Facebook and YouTube? Yeah, I'm going to post both. Okay. Nothing like last minute. It would have been cool if we could have tested this out before the show, but... I'm going to put a link so you can click on it. Okay. I'm just making everyone wait longer to see if they win. <laughs> oh, Danny, Danny. <laughs> My favorite is this one. Come on, Danny. This is a live show. Okay. Well, you can start doing giveaways, and we'll do the results after the giveaway. Okay. Am I going to pick a number then? Yep. Um, how about 25? All right. Danny's going to choose the first number. So it's five, and then five from the top. Uh, Bad Spellers Unite was the winner. Megan Wilson. Megan Wilson is the first winner of the $40 gift certificate. Congratulations, Megan. If you could please email me, uh, sarah at soulsweetness.com, sarah with no H, and then I'll connect you with uh, your prize. All right, so uh, I'm going to pick another number. If you'd like. How about yeah, page, then number. Page. So we can do English one, do older. New okay, page. Uh, page seven, and the number can be 12. Well, thank you very much, Bev. So Bev Kern is our second winner of the $40 gift certificate. Please email me, Bev. I should have picked this. What page was that? Seven? Yeah. It was Miritza says Danny is awesome, but yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. Did, did you count wrong or something? No, no. I, I just like that comment, and I like Miritza. Okay, so, so let's, pick a f let's pick a fourth live winner then, okay? No, oh, you want to give Miritza one too? Cool. Oh, I thought that's what you wanted no, me no, to do. No, I was just picking it because I liked it. Oh, okay. Um, so Mirta, Mirta's... Let's give her one too, though. Okay, Mirta's the third winner of a $40 gift certificate, and we'll we'll pick a bonus one live. <laughs> <laughs> Danny just likes seeing compliments, so um, clearly that's an, an easy way to win a Plus prize. Plus, she gave us some amazing <laughs> tamales. I mean, that's, uh, maybe in the future we'll have more tamales coming. Yeah, Mirta has mailed us some tamales in the past. Uh, they were delicious. Okay, one more winner, Danny. Yep, it's on you. Um... Number three and number, page number three, comment number, how about two? So you don't have to comment. Sharon Sherry. Sharon Sherry, congratulations to you, Sherry. So um, those four winners, if you'd please email me and I'll hook you up with your $40 gift certificate. And we're going to do three more gift certificates. Uh, so out of any everyone who comments, so um, if you watch the show, the recording of the show later in the week, you're still eligible because we didn't want to leave everyone out. So, um, all right, we posted well, the, the giveaway question. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Danny? Um, I don't know if we could copy this. Part. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun on the show tonight. Uh, thank you for participating by commenting and sharing. I think that's what makes the show so fun. Um, so we'll see you again on the third su Sunday of the month for Social Sunday, and we'll see you this Tuesday for Book Club. Bye, everybody. Um, have a great week. Well, and well, well, well. got this nice result. Okay. Boom. Oh, that's cool. So this is the poll so far of what everyone voted for as their favorite project. So 42% Paladin. Very interesting.
Send me votes. Okay, awesome. All right, thanks for posting that, Danny. Um, anyway, have a great week, everyone. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.